How's it going, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Continue the Conversation podcast. I'm David Ray, and I'm here with the one and only Pastor Mike Heyman. Come Pastor on, Mike. Come on, man. Good to see you man, all great day. seeing you. Man, we're at the table we're again. Doing it. We're doing it. Chopping it December. up. December. Man, here we are. Can you believe December's already here? You got your Christmas shopping done. <laughs> Beginning December. I hadn't even thought of it, man. <laughs> What'd you get me? Uh, can't tell you. It's not be, Christmas. Yet. It's so great. It's gonna be amazing. You just you will not believe. Yes, believe. I like oh, that. Oh, but like anything that. is possible. Oh, say it. That's the series we've been in. <laughs> That's it. That's so good, man. Well, it's so good to be back, and yep. just so thankful for our church and everybody who participates in in this podcast. Mm. And I know it helps so much for this mm. to be shared, for people to to share this out to friends and family to enemies, to whoever. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Just send seed. it to That's somebody. It. Send it. Tell somebody. Somebody <laughs> tell somebody. <laughs> yes. So today I'm excited about this topic. Ooh, I, I know yeah. last 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 a couple weeks ago we talked about faith. Faith. And That's believe right. in God. Mm-hmm. And, and it's such a helpful thing. And it's kind mm-hmm. of piggybacking off of that. Right. But talking specifically about the miracles of Jesus. Yes. And I, I know we were talking earlier how awesome it is to serve mm. a Savior who is still in the miracle yes. working business. Come on. He is the source of the supernatural. That's it. And if Jesus is still alive, miracles are still happening today. I love it, man. So I, I, we're going to start this off. Let, let's kick it off this way. Because I know okay. we're going to be looking at the miracles of Jesus, okay. why he did miracles, what they were about. Mm-hmm. But... What are some miracles you've seen in your own life? What are some experiences mm. that you've seen? It's like, wow, that mm. was God. Wow, awesome, awesome. Uh, man, where do I start? Uh, how much time we got on the podcast here? About 30 minutes. Oh, okay. So don't uh, don't make it too fast. long. Uh, I guess one of the first things I think about, uh, back in 1997, I was in a severe car accident. Yeah. And um, Rachel was pregnant with Alexa, and um, it was a December 3rd, 1997. I was on my way to church. It was a Wednesday morning. I was driving down Highland Road. It had rained, and so the roads were slippery, and a big old triple axle dump truck pulled out in front of me and just hmm. ripped my nose off my face, and, you know, they marked me dead at the scene is what I was told. Man. Um, yeah, Rachel was at school at the time, and... And uh, so came to the hospital and, you know, just uh, I was not supposed to make it. Um, I do have one memory being pulled from the wreckage because I, I don't remember anything about the collision. But I do have one memory. I, I could kind of hear some things. I couldn't see anything, but I knew something was wrong. And I just prayed this prayer. I said, Lord, first thing I thought of was Rachel being pregnant. I said, uh, I want to be able to look into the eyes of my child. Please mm-hmm. don't take me just yet. And then the second thing I thought was, God, there's so much I want to do for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, please don't be done with me. Mm-hmm. You know, if, I know if, if I go to be with Jesus, that's great. But oh, I had so much in my heart to do yeah. for the kingdom here. And God honored that prayer. And um, man, he raised me up. And, and I feel like from that day, obviously every day is a gift. But when you have a near-death experience, it gives you a greater appreciation for life. Wow. And so uh, when I go to bed at night, I pray, Lord, if you wake me up in the morning, I promise you won't regret it. And do when you I really w- say that? I do. I do lay my really? head on my pillow and I'm conscious. That's amazing. I, I try to be aware that every day is a gift. Yeah. You know, we're not guaranteed tomorrow, not guaranteed our next breath. And uh, But if the Lord gives me that gift of life, gives me this next day, I want to give it back to him and give it everything I got. That's good. So that's the first miracle. Well, that's that a I, big one. That's and kind I'm, of a big I'm, one. I know I speak on behalf of everybody. We are glad that God performed <laughs> that miracle. <laughs> And my man, goodness. now I have not just one kid, but I got three kids, eeny, and my daughter eeny, is married, my... and I got a grandbaby on the way. Whoa. Let's go. Puppy. That's it. What's your, what's your name going to be? Oh, I still hadn't figured that For out For real? Yet. You still, don't know? I don't know. I, I was told, you know, I, we Googled kind of, hey, what is, is uh, cool? Rachel, is she honey? Is she honey? I don't know. Oh, really? We hadn't decided. You don't know? I, I think she needs to be called Sweetie. Sweetie. I like Sweetie. Okay, yeah. Um, That's cool. And then I had some thoughts about what I needed to be called, but I, I like don't know if, if Rachel was in agreement, so I may not be called that. You it's going to be a miracle know. for you to be called that. 
<laughs> what is it? We're, we're just a I couple. Wonder, Help us out here. Well, I, I wonder if, like, when the baby's old enough to talk, like, whatever comes out of their mouth is actually what you're going to be called. So okay. do you even need to sweat it anyway? So huh. I don't know. Maybe we should take a survey. Yeah. Hey, man. Can send, they, us, can send, send us send us your suggestions. Send everything to Tanner.Schaefer <laughs> at HealingPlaceChurch.org. <laughs> oh, just send him all suggestions. I'm sure the whole world really cares about this one, man. Man, and, uh, is it really you don't have anything? Not nothing inside. picked out yet? Or no. Paul, Pat Paul. Mm -mm. No, uh, there, I've seen Big names like, Daddy. like Captain. Captain. Oh, I like that. That's kind of it. I like told Captain Rachel, America. I said, baby, you just start calling me Captain right now so I can get used to it. She's like, it ain't happening. Captain. I like that. I like that. I could see no, that. I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. You, God spared your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were pronounced dead. Anything else that stands out to you? Just like, wow, look what, look what God is. Well, doing. so, I mean... I, I injured my back this summer. I know yeah. these are physical miracles, sure. you know, but man, when you're in such severe pain, my goodness, yep. um, couldn't walk, couldn't couldn't lay down flat, couldn't stand up straight, uh, you know, and the, I know, Dave, the Lord has touched my body. Come I on. know he has. Man, we were in Thank church you, the other night. Oh, yeah. And man, yeah, just you dancing, baby. jumping and shouting and singing <laughs> and praising. And man, I'm like, Lord, if you know, you, you touch my body, then I'm going to go crazy for you. He touched my body. He, he healed my, my mind. mind. He, he saved me. me just in time. Oh, we need a tambourine. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. What are we talking about? Here? Miracles. Miracles. They fire you up. Amen. It, Amen. it is amazing how, you know, some people, Pastor Mike, they believe the miracles have stopped. I know. And I think that's so sad. It is. It, 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 I feel like that that kind of perspective, it limits what God wants to do. Mm -hmm. You know, there were some places in the scripture they where Jesus do. couldn't that's do right. very many say. miracles. That's right. Because of their unbelief. It actually says that he was unable to. Mm. And you think about that. It, clearly, Jesus, he didn't lack power to do no, that. No, he had the ability, the capacity, and even the desire. Mm. But they handcuffed him in that sense because they just refused to honor or believe. Mm. And Jesus marveled at two things. He marveled at people with great faith. Mm. And he marveled at people oh, with unbelief. no faith. Yeah, they just different type of marvel. Yeah, yeah. And so I want I want the Lord to be astounded at, at whatever good. faith that I, I. I think there's probably one of two ways to live. You can either live as if nothing is a miracle, or you can live as if everything yes. is. And I just choose to believe. I want to live as if everything. I am the biggest miracle I know. And I'm not trying to say one up on whatever. Mm -hmm. The fact that my life has been totally transformed. Right. Oh my goodness, man! From who I used to be to who I am now, how I used to think to how I think now, there's only one explanation, and that's God. I can't imagine you thinking any other way than you do, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just shows you how complete God's grace yeah. is. When, yeah. when you see me now, you couldn't imagine me any other I way. I cannot. That's uh, great. Uh, I love it. Well, just miracles. God's done them. And in the scriptures, Jesus performed many miracles. Mm. And I think there was actually, was it 37? 37, yeah. Recorded miracles. 37 recorded. Um, and that's in the Gospels. Uh, in so the Gospels. about Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So 37 of them. Of those 37, 21 were healings. Okay. Uh, three were raising from the dead. Can you imagine it's being a at big a one? funeral and Boom! Does that count? Raise like his own life being raised from the dead? Do you know? As I know uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't okay. include. It doesn't include okay. his resurrection. Um, so the the three twenty one were healings. Three were uh, raising from the dead. Four were casting out demons, okay. demonic spirits. Um, three showed mastery over nature. Mm -hmm. Now remember, he walked on the water. Remember, he calmed the storm. Yeah. Remember, he cursed the fig tree. Okay, yeah. So you got natural laws, and you got this super added to the natural, so he's doing something in nature. There, Three were about fish, hmm. you know, catching fish. All you the know. fishermen out there. That's it. That's it. When you say, fellas, when you tell your, your wives you're going fishing, <laughs> just be you like just a tell disciple. her, hey, I'm going, I'm stepping out into the supernatural. That's, it. That's what Jesus did. And then three of them were about food and drink. Okay. You know, when he fed okay, the like multitude. Water and wine. Yeah, and water and wine. Fish, he fed the 5,000, fed the 4,000. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so that's kind of a... A, a breakdown. Now, one miracle that Jesus performed is actually found in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and that's the feeding of the 5,000. Okay, Pretty so significant that's the only one. one. Only one. The only one. Why mm -hmm. do you think that is? Um, I, I don't... Because that is kind of peculiar that there's only one mm -hmm. that's recorded, and I know John kind of stands 
uniquely compared right. to the Synoptic mm-hmm. Gospels, Matthew, mm-hmm. Mark, and Luke. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder why that is. <laughs> Good question. I, every time I think about the the, the fish and the loaves, I, I think about God's provision, mm. and so I wonder if you know one of the, the the foundational lessons He wanted His disciples to know is I'm going to take care of you, right? You right. know, and so also He's the bread of life. Think yep. about that too. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. He's referred and to as bread. And you know, if little is much when it's placed in God's hands. And a little boy's sacrifice, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. requirement for Two miracles fish, to believe. Five loaves, five thousand. Yeah, so I, there's a lot to yeah, that one. Yeah, you know, yeah. you look at it from different angles. It, it speaks a lot. I love it. I love it. And I, I think it's so neat to be connected to a church that, you know, we're not chasing miracles, but we're right. chasing the miracle worker. Amen. And well, and you think about our very name, Healing Place Church. Mm-hmm. A healing place for a hurting yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. That just it it screams supernatural. That's right. Have your way, God. Amen. You know, doesn't the Bible even say if all the miracles that Jesus recorded? That's right. Then it says John's yeah. Gospel. John says, yeah. He says we couldn't even. The libraries couldn't even contain every book so that were things. to be written. Isn't yeah. that crazy to think? Okay, so we have thirty-seven, and just the intentionality was thirty-seven. Great, yeah. 37, the intentionality that those are included, but then who knows just how many people Jesus just walked by and boom, they were healed. Mm. Boom, something changed mm-hmm. in their life. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Job 5, verse 9, God does works too marvelous to understand. Mm. He performs miracles without number. Oh, I like that. Miracles without, like infinite. You can't even quantify. Yeah. And so I think that's what John's gospel was referring to. You know, he's writing all these things down so that we would believe. The theme of the gospel of John is belief. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, but he's saying, man, I, I can't even, I'm running out of ink in my pen. I can't keep up with everything that he's doing. Right. And uh, so I, I, I love that. I love that thought that God, it's in his nature to bless. Right. You know, it, provide, he, to protect, provide, to supply, heal, yeah, deliver, to, to redeem, to restore. Mm-hmm. You know, I, the two miracles that I thought of when, when you asked me personally were physical. But, man, there are a lot of emotional, mm-hmm. relational. You think about marriages that have been restored. Yes. You think about wayward sons and daughters, prodigals that have come home. Right. That's the supernatural it's of God. God. Yep. Yeah. I wonder how many times he's doing something and we don't get him credit for it. Mm. We say, oh, it just happened. Mm. Oh, just by the way, I mm. saw somebody the other day. And this person's not saved. And they're like, "Well, they just really, they just really lucked out on that one." And I'm thinking, uh-uh. <laughs> that was the Lord. Uh-huh. You call that it was lucky, the Lord, but I call it the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you say luck, I say the Lord. But I, I love that though, you know. And, and like you said, is is the way you look at life. Yeah. And I love looking at life when things happen, even when you go through tough times. Yeah. That they're always like miracle moments in them. Yeah. And finding them. Right. And magnifying the miracle mm. and minimizing the misery. Mm. It's not that you just say, hey, I'm not hurting, I'm not going through something. But you, you can magnify what God is doing mm. and just the goodness of God, the yes. faithfulness of God. And it just enlarges your capacity to believe and to follow mm-hmm. and to trust. Mm-hmm. But of those 37, I'm just curious. So 37 miracles. Let me ask you this. Right. Which, which one... He's like, oh man, I, this is this is kind of my favorite. Mm. Any of them? I know that's kind of hard to yeah, narrow it is. down. It's like trying to pick a favorite child. It is, it, and I tell all my kids that they're my favorites. You know, <laughs> like my dad used to do for me and my sisters. He would yeah. tuck us in bed at night, and he'd say, "Hey, don't tell your sisters." But of the three kids, you're my favorite. <laughs> and then I'd hear him go down the hall, yeah, go to my sister's room, and say the same thing. And, I do the same thing yeah. like you. Oh, you yeah. tell me that. So is that not true? <laughs> <laughs> don't talk to Pastor Johnny. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't tell Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, hope you're not watching this. One. Bad news. You need a miracle, Johnny. Uh, I, favorite miracle? I, honestly, I think it's based on the season that I'm in. Okay. You know, because yeah. sometimes when when you're in, your needs will dictate. Like you're you're reading the scripture, and based on the season that you're in, it speaks something oh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. you. Yeah, and it's kind of uh, like a message when a message is preached, and you might feel good about it. And, yeah. and some people they're like, "Yeah, it's good," but yeah. others are like, "Oh man, that yeah. was awesome because it's exactly what they need." Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I've preached many times and felt like, "Oh, that was terrible," and someone come up and be like, <laughs> "That, that was amazing." I'm like, "No, it's just because of what you're walking through that this was helping you." <laughs> yeah, but I did a pretty bad job. Uh, you know? I, don't, I don't believe that. Let the word works. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, oh, goodness. Goodness. Uh, we, let's talk about his first miracle. Okay. John chapter 2. I love that. And really, uh, on the heels of that, like his first miracle, 
really Jesus performed miracles for a reason. That's right. You know, it, he was he was doing that for a reason. And one of the main reasons, it's important our audience understands this, is he wanted people to know he was the Messiah. Right. Right. His that, that he was identity. ushering the kingdom in. Yeah. His so, identity. So the first miracle, John chapter two. Yeah, you, you turn like water water into wine. Okay, man, that's one of your and, favorites. Uh, well, I, I guess uh, you is that one of Rachel's favorites too? <laughs> Look at you, man, trying to stir up stuff, <laughs> man. Um, I, I think because it, it it seemed a little under the radar. Yeah, you know, he it wasn't a bandstand moment where the whole place knew it was him. Mm-hmm. You know that's what I'm true. saying? Yeah. Um, and, and so I guess too, this is one of the things that I, I love about Jesus is there were times where he he healed people and he'd say, shh, mm-hmm. don't tell anybody. Mm-hmm. And it's like, are you kidding me? And I've been they, crippled. And then, they'd, lame. then they'd go and tell them. Oh, they'd tell the whole world. <laughs> I think he you knew know? that would motivate them. <laughs> yeah, well, or because just like with the, the water to wine, when, when Jesus' mother came to him, he said, my time is not yet. He actually time. called her a woman. Well, I wasn't going to say I, <laughs> I didn't like, want to sound man. disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he, because he understood that, you know, his fame, you know, just the aware, almost like going viral, mm-hmm. you know, it would, the masses, and we'll talk about this maybe in a little bit, but, you know, the, the temptation of chasing the miracle instead of the miracle maker. Right, right. You know, so, you know, this water to one, it's just, it seems like an ordinary moment. It's, it's nothing really extreme or radical, but he just cared so much about the, the, the dignity of this mm-hmm. couple. Mm-hmm. You know, you think about a Jewish wedding. Being about, embarrassed. Yeah, he yeah. wanted to cover their shame or embarrassment. And so this wasn't any kind of, you know, raising from the dead, blinded eyes, lame, you know, wasn't any of that. Yeah. But it was just kind of sh- under the radar. And that actually started the clock ticking. Yeah. And so the timing of it, Jesus knowing what was at stake, his humility and um, anonymity yeah. in it, um, but just to, to bless this family. Right. Isn't that uh, awesome? I, I love so much about that story is that Mary comes to him and says, hey, they're out of wine. He's like, what's that have to do with me? Yeah, well, My time's not come yet. And she, it's like she didn't even hear him. Mm-hmm. And she goes over to those guys and says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Yes. And then it's just like, it's on. I think that right there, David, is the best advice you could give anyone. Yeah. What she told that's those good. servants. Yeah, yeah, that's a sermon right there. D- do whatever he tells you to do. Because yep. guess what? What he told them to do did not make sense. Right. But they had to obey, even when they didn't understand. They had to yeah. step out in faith, even when it didn't make sense. Do whatever he tells you to do. Because mm-hmm. she she knew mm-hmm. who he was, and however he wanted to do it, she was okay with it. Right. You know, right. so I think there's probably an element for us, for those of us that are in a place where we need a miracle, you know, we don't put God in a box. He right. doesn't have to work according to our understanding. You know, maybe, speaking of miracles, you can talk about Lazarus. Mm-hmm. Maybe Jesus waits. Mm-hmm. Lord, the one that you love is sick. Man, you guys are really close. And man, he's desperate. He needs you. And even when he got there, Mary and Martha were both like, Lord, if, yeah, if you had just too come. Late. It's too late. Yeah. yeah. You, why the delay? And sometimes love waits. Sometimes the supernatural waits. And it's not God trying to punish us. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's trying to prepare us and position us for something he wants to show us in it. Because the miracle always points to something. That's it. Specifically, it always points to someone. Mm-hmm. And the testimonies that come from it. Can you imagine from that that wedding and those who did see and all they did was just fill up water and jars and and then it turned into this amazing wine and they mm. saw that to testify of mm. it. I just think that that's the amazing magnitude of miracles. When God does them in our life, it's not just for us. Mm-hmm. There's a message from the miracle mm-hmm. that should be going out. Well, and so what did the master of ceremonies say? He said, you know, normally, yeah. man, they serve the best stuff at the beginning right. and then all the cheap stuff at the end yeah. of the party, but you have saved the, the best, best for last. last. And I, yes. I think there's a message that, hey, you know, our best days are in front of us, mm-hmm. you know. And anyway, there's, there's a lot to that. I love that. that. So when Jesus performed miracles, he, he was showing the people, he was saying, hey, I am Lord over all these things. Mm-hmm. The one who created the heavens and the earth, Genesis chapter 1. 
that he was in the beginning and now the word made flesh has, has come to them and come mm-hmm, to us. Mm-hmm. And he is showing them, hey, I'm over the weather. I'm over the waters. I'm over the fig tree. I'm over the body. Mm-hmm. I'm over death. And his miracles proved that he was the Messiah, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. he was the King of Kings. This is this is the one they've been waiting on. Right. It's the one the prophets prophesied on. The Old Testament was pointing to. And, and one of my favorites is is the story of the man with the withered hand. Ooh, I just love that okay. because Jesus says, you remember what he said to him? He says, stretch, stretch out, out your, your hand. hand. And sometimes when you need a miracle, it takes vulnerability. Yeah. It takes trust. It takes asking other people around you to stand with you mm-hmm. and kind of pulling some things back that we'd normally want to cover up because right, right. we might be ashamed or embarrassed of. Mm-hmm. And it might be something mental. It mm-hmm. might be something emotional. It might be something with a child. Mm-hmm. But as you expose that weakness, mm-hmm. God can transform it into strength. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just always love that story. That's good. And there's man. so many of them. But yeah. I, when I think about those miracles, Pastor Mike, and the 37 that we have recorded, it just echoes so loud. Mm-hmm. That he's our source. Yeah, he's our source. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so those miracles not only you know revealed his identity as the Messiah, but I, I love the scripture. I think it's Mark sixteen verse twenty. The disciples went everywhere and preached, and Jesus worked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. Mm. And so miracles not only spoke of his identity, but it confirmed the message. Yes, that he was okay. giving yeah, yeah. as it relates to the gospel. Right. You know, and so I think miracles point us to Jesus, but it also it confirms that the gospel okay. works. L- l- let's pause there for a second, because as you said, that it made me think about when Jesus sometimes he would perform miracles, and he's like, "Hey, the only reason you're following me is because you want this generation wants yeah. a sign, and they want a wonder, they want a miracle." Mm-hmm. And he was using the miracles to promote and to push the message. Right? Mm-hmm. He wanted mm-hmm. them to understand that he he's mm-hmm. the source. It's mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. It's not just hey, what I'm getting from him but I'm going to give my life to him. Mm-hmm. Talk about the struggle that sometimes even people in church face mm-hmm. to where it's just like, hey, we're just running to this. I- I'm going after this now instead of really going after the Messiah. Right, right. And you, to your point, you're exactly right. There's a real danger in being so enamored with the miracle that you forget the man and the message. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I think Matthew 11, verse 20, the Bible says, then Jesus began to denounce the towns where he performed so many of his miracles Mm -hmm. because they had not repented of their sins and turned to God. He would go into these communities and do miracles, but the most important thing was the message of turning from your sins. Yeah, I want to transform your heart. God forbid that your physical eyes, maybe they're blinded, and you gain physical sight, but your spiritual eyes are blind and your heart is cold and callous to the gospel. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the, the good things that he did in those communities were for the greatest miracle Jesus wants is born again. Yes. It's for okay. rebirth. Yes, it's for it. salvation. That's the greatest miracle. Right. And so I, I think there's a danger because, you know, there are some movements even in modern, you know, church now where it's like if, if something supernatural happens, we try to monetize that. We mm-hmm. try to market it. We say, hey, if you Mimic send it, in, do the same thing. send in your money. Yep, yep, and yep. then, you know, and so you, then that, that is a, that's the, what, what does the scripture say? The doctrine of demons, man. Hmm. You know, the, the gift of God is not for sale. Isn't it something how like something that God intends to be a gift that we can turn it around and make it an idol. Mm. It's something that we chase and we pursue. And mm-hmm. it's almost like I think about it with, with your kids. You know, you want to bless your kids. And you want to bless them because you love them. Mm-hmm. But you want them to love you. Right, right. <laughs> you, no, don't forget you don't the source. Want, yeah, hey, don't just love me because I'm making Cain's rain right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> like cane sauce is everywhere. But lo- love me and not yeah. just, hey, well, I-, I want this. And what have you done for me lately? And when it comes to miracles in our life and God moving in our life, I, I think it is so important that we keep the right heart posture mm-hmm. and we just love God. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if he if he parts the waters, I'm going to love him. Right. If the waters don't part, mm-hmm. I'm going to love him. Amen. Because he's in control of it all. I, I, I remember uh, Rachel calling me. This was several years ago. Kids were small. And uh, she had taken Trevor to get a, a physical and I think for sports or something, and, and so d- did a kind of a comprehensive thing and, and noticed some heart. things in his heart. I remember that. Yeah, and she called me, and it was not good news. Mm. It, it was one of those, you know, how one 
one text, one phone call can change, change your life yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. deal. And, um, and so it was very, very serious. And, you know, he was born with a congenital heart condition and potentially we were flying to Boston for emergency surgery. And so, I mean, that, that kind of news hit her hard. It hit me hard, man. We really pressed in. We began to pray. We talked to our family. Um, we realized how serious it was. And I can remember it, you know, petitioning God for my son, um, and, and reaching a point where I said, Lord, you don't owe me mm. anything. That's hard to say, too, though. It's hard to say when it's your son. Yeah, yeah. But, that, I, that you, but you believe that and, and know the, that to be the, true. The, the initial thought was, God, you see how, how I serve you. You see how I've sacrificed for you. You see all that I'm doing for you. Lord, would you do this for me? I had to reach the point where I said, Lord, you owe me nothing. Mm. This is before he was my son. He is yours. He's your child. And I had to, I wanted him to be healed. I wanted him to be okay. I asked God that his, the Lord's hand would be upon his life. But I had to surrender the outcome and leave it to him. Oh, and, and, and in doing that, and thankfully, we didn't have to have emergency surgery. Right. We didn't have to go to Boston. Man. Yeah, he's and, healthy uh, as a horse. Yeah, he is. Man. Dude he's is strong. huge. He's as, he's as strong as you are, man. Oh, he's stronger than he's strong not, as me, bro. He's like <laughs> oh, man. three of me. Oh, man. And, and, I think he might be stronger than you, bro. Oh, yeah, he is. If we arm wrestled right now, it would not be pretty. I'm so I, I have to. He could probably take out Johnny. Uh, Johnny's a big he's dude. Johnny's a big dude. Oh, okay, well, yeah. Incredible Hulk's hard to beat. <laughs> <laughs> but it, and I love that because you, you had to get to a place. It's almost like your Isaac moment. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you, you knew that he could provide the sacrifice, mm -hmm. but at the same time you say, Lord, mm -hmm. it, it, it's your will. Yeah. You know, we're, we're always going to pray yeah. and believe and ask mm -hmm. for the miracle. Right, right. You know, I, I, that's, how I, that's how I approach things. Same. I, you know, <clears throat> somebody gets sick going through a tough situation, need financial breakthrough, I'm going to bombard. I'm going to annoy the mess out of the Lord. <laughs> I am, man. He's going to hear like, you, huh? oh, here he comes again. <laughs> I am. But at the same time, it's, it. Lord, my faith is not contingent upon your response. That's right. So my good. faith and my belief is you're the miracle worker, mm -hmm. but you determine what miracles mm -hmm. you're going to do. And do. Yeah. Well, God let Lazarus, or Jesus let Lazarus die, mm -hmm. only to raise him up again. <laughs> Boom. You know. He's like, yeah, I could have healed him when he had his sickness, but Shocked you know what? All. I'm going to do even better than that. You know what's interesting about that miracle is the only time it's recorded, which is a pretty big one, yeah. is in the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. And so Matthew, Mark, Luke don't record it, and some, some theologians believe and historians believe that they didn't record that until later because Mark was most like the first Gospel written mm -hmm. is to for the safety of John of uh, Lazarus', Lazarus yeah. life. Rather. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Because they, cool. they want to get rid of Lazarus. Now, of course, they yeah, were trying to get kill rid Jesus, of evidence. But yeah, Lazarus was the evidence. Ooh, I got something. What was the it? enemy wants to get rid of the evidence of miracles in your life. Ooh. He wants to get rid of it. And spiritual Holy amnesia will cause right. us to get rid of it. That's right. Because all of us have a Lazarus story. Mm. All of us have Lazarus moments where God has done something significant. And it's something how whatever's in front of us seems to just gravitate our attention mm -hmm. and we're to gravitate towards it. And it's like, hey, man, don't forget mm. that he, he's done some Lazarus moments in our mm -hmm. lives. So, so the first thing is with miracles. And it was the first thing, first thing was to show he's the Messiah. Second thing for us to talk about in closing is that Jesus did miracles just purely out of compassion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is just so cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't just say, hey, I, I, I'm it. I, I'm the king of kings. Yeah. But also, I care. I care. Yeah. Well, so one of my favorite miracles, I know we said John 2 and the, the first miracle, water to wine. But I, I love where Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house because mm -hmm. Jairus' daughter is sick. And en route to the house comes the woman with the issue of blood. Oh, yeah. This is cool because in this miracle, it's almost like, she snatched it from him without even knowing. You she know? stole her miracle. Yeah, she just reached out and <laughs> I jacked it. Oh, it's 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 beautiful because it seems a little unsuspecting. And Jesus, is like, well, you know, crowds are around him. He says, "Who touched me?" And the disciples, like, "You kidding me? Everybody's all up on top of you." He's like, "No, no, no. This touch was mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. because there's something about faith. desperate faith yep, yep, yep. that pulls the supernatural." And and so when you think about how how much Jesus cares, here he is on his way to do a miracle and is interrupted by somebody who needs a miracle and 
And he does it in such a way where the people are like, well, wait a second. Don't you know? She is, uh, uh, she's unclean. She's made you unclean. It's, I mean, there's all kind of rules that are broken here. And Jesus is willing to break the rules. He's willing to break his schedule because he cares about, care about people. Mm-hmm. He cares. And so as much as they are about his king, his kingship and his kingdom, it's about his compassion. Too. Yes, I love it. And even when he fed the people, he saw that they were hungry. The disciples said, send them away. Yeah, yeah. He's it's been like, no, a long no, no. day. I know. No. We're going to take care of it. In fact, he says, you feed them. <laughs> yeah, you take care of it. <laughs> Good luck, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just think about how the Lord cares about every detail of our life. Mm-hmm. Even areas where we think maybe he, he's not too concerned about. It is something he's so powerful, so great, so caring, so loving, that every element of our life, every detail of our life, he mm-hmm. cares about. Mm-hmm. And I just encourage people today is to surrender it all to him. Mm. Because you never know what miracle could happen. That's right. You never know. That's and right. remember that he is the Messiah. Remember he's the Lord. And you know what the Lord and the Messiah receive? receives worship. Mm. We worship God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We worship Jesus is God. Amen. We believe in the Father, the Son, mm. and the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And then that God is still moving today. Jesus says this to his disciples. He says, I'm going, but I'm going to send you a helper. Right. And he says these crazy words, greater things you will do in my name. And that's who, who, is, who is that? That's us. us. That's your life. Mm-hmm. That's my life. That's mm-hmm. the people who are watching and listening. Mm-hmm. That's their life right. is to believe God for great miracles in their life and also for other people's Amen. lives. Amen. You know, and as you're talking, it makes me think, obviously there are a lot of us who are in need. We hear a message like this and, and we think about, oh, I need the supernatural in this area and this thing and what I'm believing for. But that we could actually become the answer to a prayer that somebody else is praying today. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, you know, that we could be that blessing. We could be that kind word. We could, through an act of service or compassion, there's just no telling how God can use that. <laughs> and then what that yep, unlocks yep, yep. inside of us, you know, um, God knows what we need of even before we ask. Hey, a while back, it was, it was a while back, but I was... Uh, I'd gone somewhere to, to preach, and this widow lady, we had drove, we'd left the church, we had drove to a restaurant. She drives and follows us to a restaurant, and she stops me, and she's like, hey, I've been, I've been driving trying to get <laughs> you was, something. She was, was chasing me. You've been chased by a widow. Being chased by a widow, chased by a miracle. Hey. And she said, I have a <laughs> gift for you. And she uh-huh. gave me, she, this is a widow. I, I know very, I, I don't even know her. I, I mean, literally have no idea. And the pastor's like, yeah, that's that's so-and-so, man. She's just sweetheart, you know. And mm. Here she is driving and, and coming and, and gives me $100. Wow. And, and this is what the Lord showed me that day. It wasn't just about the $100. It was a picture of that God's goodness is so good that he will chase us down wow. with miracles. Wow. But if we just posture ourselves just to say, Lord, I'm going to have a posture of just looking for miracles mm. in every direction mm. and, and use those moments to always give glory to God. Dude, here's that's an, awesome. Here's man. another thing. Well, I was going to say this, now that you yeah, got go that $100, if you're ever chasing me, <laughs> bro, stop, I will man. let you chase me. I'll let you catch that's me, Dave. Back. I need to Venmo you. <laughs> I doubt she had Bimbo. <laughs> That's surprised. beautiful, though, man. Uh, yeah. That's like the Elijah and the widow woman. Yeah. Hey, well, yeah. You, she's collecting, you know, a few sticks, and she had a little flour, a little oil. Right. It's down to her last meal. And, and you know the thing, in, in, in that season when she did that, I actually had something on my mind as it related to something financial that I was concerned about, mm. that the Lord was just like, hey. Pow. He broke hey, that off your listen, line, didn't I, I, I can use a widow. Yes. I can use this. I can use that. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. Just just be keep your eyes mm. open, you know. Mm. Just keep your eyes open. And then whenever he does things like that, I just encourage people. I, I like physically hitting my knees. Mm. That's just a posture just to mm-hmm. say, mm-hmm. God, mm-hmm. thank you. So good. Thank you. So good. I was in Planet Fitness not too long ago. I got a phone call, and I, I had a need. And, and I didn't even know that people knew I had a need. And this guy is a physical need to have. This guy calls and he says, hey, I've got something for you. I'm, I'm going to give this to you. I kid you not. This isn't me boasting. 
I, I hit my knees and <laughs> played at fitness, raised my hands and said, Let's I go. mean, it was one of those, man. Yes. I was like, thank you, Lord. Amen. But, you know, too many times we just. Well, so look. Move on. Move Luke, on. Luke 17, when Jesus healed the 10 lepers. Nine of them just went That's on it. their way. I ain't going to be like that. But one of them came back That's and right. fell at his feet and thanked him. Hey, out of the 10 I want to be that one. Let's be the one. Let's baby. be the one. I man. love it. I love it. Let's, uh, that's a good place to end because that, that's something. Let's do this as we're as we're closing. Let's encourage people: is is you know seek God. You know he, he, we're we're after Him. Mm. We're after the miracle worker. That's right. We're we're pursuing Him. Right. Believe God for miracles, and as God does big things and small things, let's give all the credit to Him. Because your miracle has a message. That's right. I love that. That's right. Don't allow the enemy and don't allow your own forgetfulness to forget the message of the miracle. That's good. I like what you said, man. Don't hit the devil trying to steal the evidence. Mm -mm. (laughs) Don't let him do it. Write it down, record it, refer to it, remember it, rehearse it. Man, the evidence of the supernatural is all around. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. (laughs) Hey, I love you, man. This has been fun. It's been great. Thankful for you guys so much. We love you. Hey, keep coming to church. The month of December is going to be amazing. Christmas service is right around the corner. Going to be packed. That's it. Full house. Pastor Mike looking good on Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, we love you guys. God bless you.